Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Footprints of the Creator. Your host for this evening is myself Yusuf and Brother Abdul Qadir. Assalamu alaikum. Today we will be discussing aspects of hydrology from the Quran. We will discuss the water cycle and some phenomena with reference to the seas. Now we find that if we look at the Quran, we find a meticulous and detailed reference to very vital aspects of the water cycle. Now, before we look at the the verses that refer in the Quran, we must understand that we should consider the state of knowledge at the time in which the Quran was revealed. And then we could see this in perspective. Of course, a lot of this may seem to us quite simple and obvious. But if we consider the time of revelation of the Quran in the 7th century and what the ideas were at the time, we would find that the Quran very beautifully does not fall into any of these errors or any of these mythical concepts. Some of the concepts that were present at the time of the revelation of the Quran. For example, when it came to the formation of rain, in the 7th century, there was a theory that the water of the oceans under effect of the winds was thrust towards the interior of the continents. And so this caused water to fall on the earth. That is, there was this water from the oceans was just pushed onto the earth and this causes rain to fall. And this was uh, one of the views that was shared by Plato. Now, Plato was one of the great Greek philosophers at the time. And he also thought that this is how rain was formed, that there were some winds that blew the water of the oceans over the lands and caused rain. And in fact, he thought that the water that fell on the earth went back into the oceans through a great abyss, which he called the Tartarus. So he thought there was a very vast opening in the earth which drained all the water into the ocean. Now this theory had many supporters, even right until the 18th century. For example, Descartes, Aristotle, these were other great Greek philosophers at the time. Aristotle, for example, he thought that water vapor from the soil condensed in cool mountain caverns. And then this formed the underground lakes that fed springs. So they thought that these springs arose from underground lakes. And this was accepted until 1877. The first concept of water cycle emerged in 1580, but it was only confirmed in the 17th century. So despite all these uh, concepts, we find that if we look at the Quran, that the Quran is free from all these sort of confusions. Let us now specifically target some verses which give the Quranic perspective as to how water, this continuous cycle of water, sea, river, rain, etc., how it continu- continuously goes. And these verses will shed some light which, has, which, as we shall find out later, have only recently been discovered through modern scientific techniques. Now the first verse that we need to discuss is found in Surah 50 verse 9 to 11. And I quote, We send down from the sky blessed water, whereby we cause to grow gardens, grain for harvest, tall palm trees with their shoots piled one above the other, sustenance for our servants. Therewith we give new life to a dead land. So will be the resurrection. Just one or two points from this verse. Here Allah mentions the cycle in a very brief way with the intention of highlighting the importance of water as a life-giving source in giving rise and giving life to a dead earth. And immediately, apart from explaining this phenomena, Allah draws our attention to the importance of the resurrection. Just as the water falls on the dead ground and gives life to a dead earth, Allah reminds us that take heed, look, observe and learn. This is what's going to happen. When you die die and become dust, and the resurrection will occur just as the dead land is resurrected with water. Again in Surah 23 verse 18 to 19 we are told, We send down water or rain from the sky in measure and lodged it in the ground and we certainly are able to withdraw it therefrom, therewith for you. We gave rise to gardens of palm trees and vineyards where for you are abundant fruits and of them you eat. Now yet another verse but this from a different point where Allah wishes to highlight the fact that the water that falls to the ground gives rise to fruit for us to eat. So it is a mercy and a blessing. 
The rain itself is a mercy and blessing. And Allah tells us a very important fact that this water penetrates and seeps through into the ground and forms what is known as the water table underneath. And if Allah wanted to, He could have left the water underground and we would have been at a loss. But Allah tells us He would draw it there would for you, for you. That is the springs that gush forth from the mountains. So Allah gives a very important scientific fact here that water falls, it penetrates through, forms the water table and it comes forth as springs which gush forth so that we are able to drink from it. So yet another verse what Allah says with regard to water to highlight that how out of His mercy He drops the water, it lodges in the ground and He brings it forth. And apart from that, the benefit of this rain is to provide food, fruit and food for us to eat. The next verse is found in Surah 15 verse 22 where Allah says, We send forth the winds that impregnate and we cause the rain water to descend from the skies. We provide you with water. You could not be the guardian of his resources. Now from this, two important points need highlighting. Firstly, Allah talks about the importance of winds. The fact that winds have been sent, and Allah used the word, the winds that impregnate. Now, how do the winds do this? Firstly, they impregnate by being uh, a vehicle for pollination. We know that the winds blow the pollen off the plants, and through this process of cross-fertilization, this is how fertilization occurs, by the process of winds. Secondly, what the winds do is they cause the non-rain-bearing clouds to join, to grow, to mature. They become full and the winds are basically directly responsible for the production thereof of rain, which causes life to grow from the earth. Another point which Allah says, and it is highlighted in this point, in, in this verse, that even though man may be able to store water in the dams, in tanks, he cannot be the guardian of the primary source of water, which is Allah. Because it is through the will and power of Allah that the clouds form and rains appear. It is Allah who controls and disperses the rain as He pleases and wherever He wants to. Yet another verse is found in Surah 35 verse 9. And we are told, Allah is the one who sends forth the winds which raise up the clouds. We drive them to a dead land. There would we revive the ground after its death. So will be the resurrection. Again in Surah 7, verse 57, Allah says, Allah is the one who sends forth the winds like heralds of His mercy. When they have carried the heavy laden clouds, we drive them to a dead land. Then we cause water to descend and thereby bring forth fruits of every kind. Thus we will bring forth the dead. Maybe you will remember. Just very briefly, two points that need highlighting from these two verses. Firstly, in these two verses, Allah talks about the importance of wind in the formation of rain and in the cycle of water. Second point which need highlighting is the role of water in reviving a dead earth. And as I've mentioned before, this verse re-emphasizes the, the, what is going to happen with regard to the resurrection. As the earth is dead, as the winds come and bring forth the rain, so new life is generated. And Allah tells us, look and reflect. That is how you will be resurrected as well. Another verse which needs to be discussed is in found in Surah 25, verse 48 and 49, where we are told, Allah is the one who sends forth the winds like heralds of His mercy. We cause pure water to descend in order to revive a dead land with it and to supply with drink the multitude of cattle and human beings we have created. I think a very important point there is that Allah says He sends down pure water. And if you consider that the water that evaporates from the earth, a vast amount evaporates from the oceans. Now the ocean is salty water. And yet because of this procedure, Allah takes the water that goes up devoid of the salt and comes on as pure water which is for us to drink. So it's quite uh, beautiful. And the fact about the winds, I think just want to make a point that, that as you mentioned, the importance of wind, that they create air currents and they cause the global cycling of air. And they're responsible for the variation of weather, for the variation of climates and so on. And this is highlighted in a number of verses, as you pointed out. Yes, now we've mentioned the, the fact that the winds do definitely play an important role. It is like we said, Allah mentions 
important facts and scientific phenomena. It is for us, as he says, to reflect and remember his bounteous graces and mercy on us. Another verse which Allah says in Surah 45 verse 5, we are told, And in the provision that Allah sends down from the sky, and thereby he revives the ground after its death, and in the change of direction of winds, they are signs for people who are wise. So again, Allah asks us to ponder on this marvel, marvelous phenomena which controls the, the water. Surah 13 verse 17 again we are told, Allah sends rain down from the sky so that the rivers flow according to their measure. The torrents bear away an, an increasing foam. And again in Surah 67 verse 30 we are told, Say, do you see if your water were to be lost in the ground, who then can supply you with gushing water? I think just to make a point there that, you know, the rain's washing down the increasing foam. I think there are very important points being highlighted as well. Refine the importance of the rivers, that they cause soil to be carried from the mountainside, from the various rocks and so on. And this soil is very rich in the various minerals and elements and so on. And because of this river washing it down, it causes it to be washed down and passes on to the soil and thereby gives fertility to the soil as well. Yes, this definitely helps in man's fertilization and in his uh, farmers with regard to growing plants and fruits. Again, we are told in Surah 39 verse 21, Has thou not seen that Allah sends down rainwater from the sky and led it through sources into the ground? We need another important point that needs to be highlighted. Allah says that apart from the rain just falling and as he said, he lodges it in the ground. Now, if, if that were to happen, then man would not have been able to tap into any source of water for irrigation and even for his own drinking. But Allah says, out of his mercy, he allows the water to gush forth in springs. We know the cruel, crystal clear water. Any one of us who have been to the Drakensberg or to the mountains, the spring that flows and finds its way to the ocean until it becomes a mighty river. It is through Allah's mercy that the water which is lodged in the ground is brought forth in the form of springs so that we are able to derive benefit and gain our drinking water therefrom. And we can compare it to the beliefs at the time of the revelation of the Quran of the source of the springs. That they thought they were underground lakes, which you know we don't even know how they explain how they arose. And in this verse, Allah beautifully shows that the source of the water is from the rain that penetrates into penetrates the ground and accumulates true. at the bottom as well. Yes, that which results in the water table and then the springs forming. Finally, the last verse is found in Surah 36, verse 34, where we are told, Therein we placed gardens of palm trees and vineyards, and we caused water springs to gush forth. So all these verses stress some very important points. I've mentioned the importance of springs. The second thing I've mentioned is that these springs are able, from these springs, we are able to derive water for us to drink. And thereby man can irrigate his land and plants. A, fi a final verse is found in Surah 39, verse 21, where we are told, Has thou not seen that Allah sends down rainwater from the sky and led it through sources into the ground? Then he causes sown fields of different colors to grow. So here again, Allah em emphasizes the importance of the water penetrating into the ground. That is what... That is the actual source of the springs and the rivers that gushing forth. There are no natural lakes found underneath as was believed before. It is the process of rain penetrating through and accumulating and finally bursting forth as springs. And this is what Allah, all these verses I've described, they are very, very important points which Allah mentions. He mentions the importance of rain, uh, importance of wind in the formation of rain. Allah mentions about the importance of water lodging, penetrating into the ground. And it is from this penetration that we get the bursting forth of springs which man can use and utilize for his benefits. And Allah says that this rain that he sends, it's pure water from a salty ocean. And in this pure water, we derive our benefit both to the earth that is dead and gives the resurrection and both for man's benefit in drinking. We will now go on to discuss the water cycle to put into perspective the Quranic ayah which we have just described. Now first of all, energy from the sun causes water from the soil, from the rivers, from the oceans to evaporate. Now if this evaporation continued without the water returning to the earth, 
we will find that soon all the water will be depleted from the earth's surface. If you consider that this goes on for the billions of years. So Allah has made so beautiful a cycle to ensure that water returns and continues in this global cycle. Now when the sun shines on the rivers, on the oceans and on the earth, it causes the water to evaporate, that it become water vapor. And as this is warm, it rises. As it rises, it goes up into the cooler upper atmosphere and this causes the water vapor to condense and that is to form very small droplets of water. Now these droplets of water form clouds. Now, as a result of the action of winds, they cause the clouds to gather together, to join up and this causes greater condensation until a critical volume is reached and then we get rain, hail and snow. And this water then is returned to the earth and the cycle continues. Now we find that when the water falls on the earth, some of it is taken up by the vegetation. Some of it runs off and by via channels through rivers goes back into the ocean. While others penetrate into the soil and forms reservoirs deep underneath which gives the source of springs and so on. Now, when we drink water, it is incorporated into our bodies. The plants use water as well for their produ producing their food substances. Now, this water is returned to the earth by a few means. Number one, by transpiration. That is, water is lost from the plants during the day and the water is returned back into the environment. Number two, when we breathe out, we also breathe out water vapor. We also perspire and this causes water vapor to be returned to the atmosphere. Also, from waste products, water is returned into the natural environment. And lastly, of course, with death, we find that the water that is incorporated into tissues is released into the environment again. So we find that this water goes under a continuous cycle. Now, almost all the water on earth has passed through the cycle over millions and millions of times. And very little water has been created new or lost over billions of years. And this is indeed a remarkable efficiency of water. Now we find that 1.4 billion cubic kilometers of water on earth. And 97% of this is in the ocean. That is 97% of water is salty and is not accessible for drinking. Now evaporated water is so important because... It causes water to evaporate it from the oceans, which is salty. And the water that evaporates it is free from salt and therefore comes down as fresh water. And so we see how beautifully Allah has made this water cycle and ensures the cycling of water throughout the ages. So this is indeed something quite remarkable.